All right, guys, I'm coming to you from the lower field behind the sawmill. You can see the sawmill building right up there. Now, I'm looking for some cedar. I've been trying to find some cedar logs to sawmill for a long time. I found some the other day, but the loggers don't use them for fence posts. I think we may have found some here that's gonna be decent. And they need to come down anyway. So I got this creek, it runs at the bottom down here, the total length of the farm. I got the cats down here with me as well. These cats are like dogs, people. We got nine cats. There's mama cat way down in there and they follow me everywhere. I can't go anywhere without the cats unless I'm in the tractor. So here's what we're looking at. Right here above that creek line, my property goes on the other side of that creek. There's a fence right there. My neighbor's got some horses over there. And there are some decent cedar down here. They're not that big, but cedar you don't want them real big. You want them about, you know, 8, 10, 12 inch logs because if you get bigger than that on cedar, they have lots of voids in them. It's not a bad one right there. That's about an 8 inch log. Not too bad. And they need to come down anyways. Hopefully sometime this winter, we're going to get the tractor down here and reestablish this whole creek line right here and the fence line as well. Need to redo this whole thing. It's going to be a huge project. I'm looking forward to it, actually. I like doing stuff like that. A real good size cedar right here. Mama Cat's getting a measurement for us there. That's about an eight or a 12 inch right there. Maybe 12 at the bottom. It kind of tapers as it goes up. A lot of lemon to do on those, but that's part of it with cedar. Let's see what else we got down here. We can get us a few decent logs down here at the bottom. It's kind of steep down here though. You can see the terrain. Probably won't bring the big tractor down here. I'll probably get the ATV and the log arch. That's a decent one right there. So not too bad. We might get maybe a couple dozen logs out of this fence line. Got an old terrible Virginia pine right there as well. Poking its head up. A lot of work to do here, guys, a lot of work, but at least we can salvage a lot of this cedar and get some good usable lumber out of it. Up here at the sawmill, this is what I've been working on. We got some nice four by fours right there. That's white pine. And what I'm doing, I'm working on a cut list for the barn Got a bunch of two by fours right there. And over here on the saw horses, a lot of two by fours and those uh, two by tens at the very bottom. Also got some white oak on there. Those are four by fours as well. I cut those last night. And if you're new to this channel, friends, something I want to point out is I have a hard time filming with cats. We got nine cats up here. This is Cabbage right here. He's turned into the new sawmill cat. He's up here with me all the time. Bruno has petted these cats to death. I say that as I'm sitting here petting on him. So anyways, friends, if you're new to this channel, this right here is an actual size 4x4. Four four. When you see nominal size lumber, that's not real 4x4s, four four, and you see that at Lowe's and Home Depot, wherever you go get your stuff at. This is actual size right here, 4 inches. That's what's going on here right now. We'll offload these 4x4s, four four, get those ready for the saw horses. That right there is some white oak 4x4. Four four. I actually sold both of those. I was going to use them, but a guy on Instagram sent me a message, said he wanted them. So I guess I'll sell them to him. I don't really need some white oak right now for the 4x4. Four four. It's a little too heavy. We're going to move on to this white pine. And this one is probably going to be 2x4s. It's about a 10 footer. We'll get a few 2x4s out of that one. So let's fire up the Yanmar and get rid of these cats and knock out this white pine. And also, one more thing, we gotta jump in the tractor because the slabs are piling up. Those right there are headed to the burn pile. And I, get st I still get tons of questions about this. My sawdust, 90% of our sawdust we burn and about 10% of it goes over there in the garden. Can't give this stuff away, guys. It's a, you know, it's like a baby powder. It's so thin, people can't use it for animals and stuff like that. And I usually have walnut mixed in with it, which is bad for animals. So that kind of disqualifies it as well. But I'll burn all this stuff, guys.
One of the best decisions I ever made up here at this mill was installing this diesel tank in this pump right here. My goodness. So nice. Well worth the investment. I probably got about $400 in this whole entire kit between the tank and the pump and the hose. Man, should have done it a long time ago. A little limb sticking out right there over the rail will cause you to have a bad day in a real hurry on a sawmill, guys. That catches that mass as it drives down through here. It's gonna have a lot of problems right there. Always double check your timber and make sure nothing's sticking out, especially on the rail side right here. Very important. share something with you. I came up with this the other day. We got a speed square and a framing square. So when you put your log up for the third cut, as you can see right here, I got a flat face right here on the other side. I've done a video of this a while back. I always take this little framing square and lay it on the bed of the sawmill to square up the timber. Don't rely on these back stops here to square up your log because the clamp is so strong to watch these back stops. They'll get pushed over just a little bit right there. And sometimes you don't push them over enough. So you can't rely on this bed totally to get a completely square cant or timber or whatever you're doing. And I'm real anal about that. I want my lumber as perfect as possible. That's just my preference. So my buddy Chris Coon down in South Carolina came up here early spring and he showed me that method using this little framing square. And it works out good, but it's kind of hard in a one-man operation. He's got two or three guys running his LT40. So he has one guy holding this square on the timber and another guy at the controls on the hydraulics, you know, moving back and forth, getting it just right. With me, not so much. You know, I'm back here running the controls and I got to run back and forth to take measurements and it kind of takes a while. And sometimes you run back and forth four or five times. So the other day I couldn't find this thing. I'm glad I didn't now because I came up with a different method. It works better if you got a one man operation and a lot of you guys are out there sawing by yourself like I am. An oversized speed square. I bought this at Lowe's a long time ago. 12 inches right there. They may make one bigger than this. I'm gonna try to find one a little bit larger because it would probably work a little bit better on bigger timber, but it's working just fine right now. And the reason I like this Right here on the bottom, it's got kind of a wide base right there. It looks like about maybe three quarters of an inch. And I can set this on the bed rail. I don't know if you guys can see. 
just like that, put it against the timber, and as long as I'm good with my hydraulics, I don't jerk it too much, I can see back here my line of sight and get a nice fit right there against the square and get my timber where I want it. Makes a real big difference. Like right now, I'm right on the money. Sometimes you get right on the money. I'm good. I'm that good. I'm just kidding. Uh, sometimes you get lucky when you square these things up and uh, you get them right where you want them the first time. You don't have to check them again, but 99% of the time they're not square. You gotta sit there and move it back and forth. But as you can see, that's a whole lot easier. Ideally, if I can find a, a larger speed square, it'd be even better. And to make it even more efficient, maybe put some earth magnets right here on the bottom just to make it a little bit more secure, give it a better purchase here on the bed rail. But I don't know about that. But it works out a lot better than this. Friends, I'll throw the slabs on the fort so we'll take them down to the burn pile. There we go. And for you people interested in that little trick, try that out sometime. Make stuff go a lot faster. Daddy took me high up on the mountain So he could show me how to get old There it is, son, thine cup of the fountain For you to drink from and clean your soul Welcome to the mountain, now you're free It's time for you to climb your family tree You'll not hear his music 